Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking cylinder text effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we need to create here is our content and I'm just using Adobe Firefly. They've recently updated to the version 2 beta of Firefly and honestly the images are a whole lot better. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff in here so please explore it if you haven't had a chance. But what I'm looking for here in my prompt is a man looking at a sky full of candy planets. And I've chosen this one because I feel like it will be the easiest one to cut all of these objects out. So once you've done all that, then all you have to do is just download this and we'll take it into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop and I'm just going to create a new 1920 by 1080 pixel document. Just press create and then I'm just going to drag my image onto this composition. Cool. So now all I have to do is just make it fit in here and then I can just press enter and then I can start cutting away. So before we do all that, we do have to rasterize this layer and then once I've done that, then I can go to the object selection tool and then I can just click on the subject over here and then what I can do is once it's selected I can press command and shift J and that will cut that to a new layer. So all I have to do is just cut out all of these planets just always make sure you go back to that main uh, layer here. Cool so now once you have all that and you take the eyes off everything and you're just left with this main background layer with all of these gaps in here. So what we need to do is we need to fill in these gaps. So you can do this by highlighting a section over that gap and then going into edit content aware fill. So once you get access to this panel you can change some of these settings over here. So if you don't like one you can always you know play around with some of these settings and you can see the results that are there. I'm always going to output to the current layer and then just press apply and OK and then you need to do the rest for all of them. Cool, so now we've got a nice, you know, clean background and then all we have to do is we just have to export each of these pictures individually. So I'm going to show you how to do it on the first one. All you have to do is just go to file and then go to export and you can either go export as or quick export as PNG. But please make sure that you do not have the background layer on and you can see the transparency like that. It has to be PNG because that is the one file format that has transparency in the background. Once we've done that, then we'll go into After Effects. So here we are in After Effects and the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new composition. So I'm just going to run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document, 30 FPS at a duration of about 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we've got that, we need to import all of our assets. So I'm just going to go to File Import and I'm just going to put all of my assets there and I'm just going to put them onto the timeline. Now, if you need to change the scale for any of these, um, you can do that by pressing S. If not, it all should fit nicely on your screen. So just make sure that you put the background right at the end, just so you can see all the planets on top of it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some of these planets move. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press P for position, and then I'm gonna hold Option and hit that stopwatch. And I'm gonna write a few values in here. I'm gonna write wiggle 1 comma 10, and then if you scrub through that timeline, you can see that that planet is moving a little bit. And if you want it to move further away, then all you have to do is just increase the second value. If you don't want it to move as fast, then you increase or decrease the first value. So I'm going to do that for all of these. Press P for position, then press hold option and press on that stopwatch to bring up the expressions. And then for the next one, I'm going to write 0 0.5 comma 30. I'm going to do it for number three as well. Hold option. I'm going to write wiggle and then I'm going to write 0.3 uh, comma 40. And then for the next one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple position animation. So I'm going to hit that stopwatch and then I'm going to move forward to the end of that. Actually, I'll, I'll bring it to about three seconds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it. So I'm just going to move it down to something like that. And then I'm going to hold option and I'm going to hit that stopwatch and I'm going to write loop, uh, loop out. And then inside the brackets, I'm going to write ping pong. And if you've done that correctly, now you will see that planet moving backwards and forwards and that's looking pretty cool. And we've got one more planet to go. So I'm just going to press P for position and I'm going to hold option, hit that stopwatch and write wiggle one comma four. 
So now we've got all of our background and all of our planets moving. That's looking pretty cool. We need to actually make the background move as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for an effect called CC Slant. And I'm going to make sure that I put the floor somewhere in the middle, just like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slant it. I'm going to hit that stopwatch and probably put the slant to negative 10. And then I'm going to move to the end of that composition and I'm going to put it to positive 10. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have that slant. But now we have those black bars on the side. So to fix that, what we need to do is we need to put an effect called motion tile. Make sure it's above CC slant. And we're just going to increase those sides and then click mirror edges. And now you have a nice, you know, moving uh, animated background. So now what I need to do is I need to pre-compose all of those. So I need to highlight all those layers, go to layer, pre-compose, and I'll just call that BG. Make sure you move all attributes. And now we're ready for our next step, which is the text. So to save time with the text, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna download this template here and then I'm gonna open it up in Adobe Illustrator. And here we are in Illustrator. So all I need to do is I just need to double click on this. So I'm just gonna write create, the future you can write whatever you want so now to change the color all we need to do is just go to edit and then go to uh, edit colors recolor artwork and then you can move the slider around or you can just double click on it and then pick the color that you want and make sure that you put the brightness all the way up and then all we need to do is go into our layers uh, get rid of the objects and the background and then what we need to do is we need to export this so if we go to export export as and we save it as a png we can then bring it back into after effects so now that we've got the text we're going to make a new composition and we're just going to call this text and inside of this we are going to put our png that we just created cool so now that we have our png in here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to bring down that scale to about 50 percent and i'm just going to move it onto this side over here and then i'm just going to move the duplicate on this side over here and then i'm just going to space them out a little bit so maybe i can hold both and then i can just increase the scale you know a little bit more maybe that's too much we'll just go down to about 51 percent okay cool so now that we have our text what we need to do is we need to put that back into our main comp. Cool, so now that we have our text layer, what we need to do is I'm just gonna drag it into my composition. I also am going to import my man as well. So I'm just gonna go file import and I'm gonna drag him underneath as well. Now I'm also gonna change the scale and set that back to percent so it all fits nicely but you probably won't have to do that the next thing that i'm going to do is on my text layer i'm going to search for the effect called cc cylinder and once i've got that effect i'm just going to change a few things i'm going to go to the rotation settings i'm going to increase the rotation x to about 11 percent and i'm going to set a stopwatch on rotation y at the first keyframe and then i'm going to go to uh, the end of the composition and then just go to one and so now if you've done that correctly now you will have that spinning but it's not behind the character over here so i'm just going to duplicate that text layer and i'm going to drag one underneath all right and so i'm going to work on the top layer um, to start and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to open up the shader settings and i'm going to increase this to let's say 100 and i'm going to change the render to outside and so now if you've done that correctly now it kind of looks like it's around the guy's head and that looks pretty cool but also what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some camera lens blur here as well so i'm just going to change the blur radius to about one and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to work on that second layer as well so this time i'm going to change the render to inside and then i'm going to change the shading i'm going to drop down the ambient so i'm not going to drop it all the way but maybe to somewhere like let's say 50 but i am going to drop the diffuse to let's say zero so now we have like a cool kind of shaded in area at the back and i'm also going to add the camera lens blur and this time i'm going to keep it you know at probably about five percent something like that 
So now what we can do is going back to this text layer, we can also add some glow in here. And if I just change the glow radius to let's say something like 40, now you've got it glowing. Maybe I can drop down the intensity to let's say 0.5. Seven. So totally up to you what you want to play around with with a little bit of glow. But the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a camera. So I'm just going to add a camera. I'm going to run with a 35mm camera. I'm just going to make those text layers uh, 3D. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the end of that composition, press P for position. And then I'm just going to press this button over here and I'm just going to set it to where I want it to end. And once you're happy with the final resting spot, you can hit that stopwatch and then you can move forward to the beginning of the composition and then just rotate the camera to where you want it. So I'll probably start it off, you know, maybe something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move into the middle of that timeline and I'm going to find that dolly towards and I'm just gonna bring that in and I'm just gonna kind of dolly zoom that in. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have this cool animation that kind of rips around, gets to about there and then it slowly goes back to its resting point. And I think that's looking pretty cool. And now we're up to the adjustments. So to create the adjustment layers, all we need to do is just right click add a new adjustment layer. And if you have noise and grain, you can always bump that up to about 10%. And that's pretty much it if you're using the default plugins. But what I'm gonna show you is what you can do with some of the paid plugins. So what I'm gonna show you is some other variations with other plugins. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a glow around the man over here. So a really cool plugin for that is um, a plugin from Red Giant called Ecto. And what you can do here is you can change the colors to, you know, whatever you have there. And you can also change the glow opacity to whatever you want. Maybe bring it down a little bit because it's a little bit too intense. Or you can go through and have a look at some of the presets as well. But I think that looks pretty cool. And the final thing that we're gonna have a look at is using Dehancer. So the final effect I'm gonna show you is how to tie it all together using Dehancer Pro. Now Dehancer Pro has just been updated to version 2.0. The beta is out at the moment if you wanna try it. And it includes some exciting new tools and improvements, which include film damage tools, tool presets, clipping monitors, LUT generator fixes, and other minor improvements. And also on a side note, that starting from October 25th, the price for Dehancer Pro will increase from 399 to 449 USD. So if you wanna go and check it out, go to dehancer.com and sign up for a two week trial. Or if you wanna purchase this, you can always use the link that's in the description and it will give you 10% off. But now let me show you how I would tie all of this together using Dehancer. The first thing that I would go in here and do is I'd go and change the profile to, you know, one of these presets that we have here. So I'm gonna use the Fuji Color Superior 1600 and I'm just gonna go back into the film developer. I'm gonna enable that and I'm just gonna increase the color boost. Now, because this, you know, uh, composition is fairly vibrant, just by adding a bit of color boost will kind of bring those colors and really, you know, make it pop. But the cool thing in here, which I always use, I, I always tend to put halation on top of things and that just kind of brightens up some of these areas over here. And then also um, you can add a bit of bloom as well. And bloom just creates an, a little bit extra on those edges over there. And I think just the standard, you know, settings in that looks pretty cool, but I mean, feel free to experiment. But some of the new features in here, like film damage. Film damage is actually really, really cool. When we add some film damage, let's say for a, a Super 8 or 8 mm uh, setting over here, you can see what it does here. It creates like all of those little um, noise and grain that you would find in the original kind of footage. And for me, I think that looks amazing because that really gives that vibrant kind of noise look which I was actually going for. So always on, on pretty much all of my tutorials, I always run noise and grain. And honestly, by using Dehancer, you can get a really nice effect there. So anyways, guys, that's gonna be it for this uh, shortish, longish tutorial. Um, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.